Our first film is Ronin, a Japanese word referring to samurai warriors who have lost their lord and are now obliged to seek out work as hired hands. We'll sword fight for food, I guess. <laughs> and this legend is applied to the world of global terrorism in Ronin, which features an international cast of contemporary warriors, including an American, Robert De Niro, who identifies himself as a former CIA agent. While shopping for munitions, he questions the judgment of one of his teammates, a British field expert played by Sean Bean. Representing France, Jean Renault. You know, you think so hard. Nobody ever told me that before. But I wouldn't go in there. Where's it, sir? I don't like it. Heading the mission, an Irish beauty played by Natasha McElhone. The assignment, to steal a mysterious suitcase filled with, well, we're not sure and neither are the crew, which makes De Niro's character quite uneasy. What's in the case? That information is necessary. Is it heavy? Is it explosive? Is it chained to some unlucky bloke's wrist? We're going to have to chop it off? I mean, All right. What is it? But I'm not under any obligation to let you know. If you are not, then the price has got to go up. I'll get you the case, but the price has got to go up. If it's going to be amateur night, I want $100,000. I want it up front. I want it in a bank account. I want another 100000 when you get the case. McElhone's boss in the film is a terrorist played by Jonathan Price. Russians are trying to bid for the case. Cases in Nice, they're trying to sell it to the Russians. Of course, there are chase scenes as the team of mercenaries races after the mystery case here on the streets of Old Nice. Okay, you're in front of him. You can cut him off at the end of the porch. Roger that. I got it. That's Stellan Skarsgård as an Eastern Bloc computer whiz. He's a treacherous sort, double-crossing the team and stealing the case for the Russian. Show me the case first. You're great in the locker room, pal. And your reflexes might die hard, but you're weak when you put your spikes on. Gregor, are you all right? Gregor's fine. But I think you're in a wee spot of trouble. And that leads to what else? More chase scenes. Now, though the action is familiar, it is director John Frankenheimer who displays his old form in leaving us enough time amid the action to enjoy the characters maneuvering and the overall trickery of the story. This adventure works not only because of the strong cast, I like the film. I like it too, and I think that Frankenheimer here gets a really good look for these locations, this kind of the Riviera and Paris in a kind of an off-season I really like the feel of the film, and I also like the fact that the briefcase is never explained. You know what I think was in the briefcase? I think the briefcase contains the briefcase from Pulp Fiction, obviously. <laughs> because this is a perfect MacGuffin, as Hitchcock defines it. It doesn't matter what's in the briefcase, it only matters that everybody wants it. And again, we have typically in action pictures, international action pictures, they're like on the uh, escalator, you know, going by us. This time, Frankenheimer takes time with each character, and, and we can really enjoy them. Yeah, well, of course, we're left with our old observation about so many of these films. In real life, it probably would have made the papers that dozens are dead, and highways are in flames, <laughs> and cities have been blowing up all over France for a week on end. But, of course, in a thriller, they just keep moving on to the Yeah, the Hell's Tribune would have got on this story. Probably would have.